Welcome back to the watch list. Thanks for being with us on Semi. Well, these shares are taking a hit, a big hit. In fact, down about 20% after the earnings report. Kim Forrest is with us, founder, chief investment officer at Boga Capital Partners, and William Kerwin, equity analyst at Morningstar. And, you know, some of this, as we look at the outlook, this group and the performance, I'll start with you, Kim. What's going on here? Were you surprised to see a 20% move today after this quarterly report? Well, if you are expecting um, great things and they don't deliver, I would say yes, I would expect a big disproportionate drop. But again, I don't think this company is working in the big area that all of our focus seems to be on, and that is AI. And that's probably one of the big issues is the thought about what a semiconductor is and who is deploying it. It's all in one very small focus right now. And that would be the whole uh, generative AI space. And if you're not in there, you might get caught like on semi. Yeah, and you know, this bleak fourth quarter outlook, um, you know, AI, it has been saving the day, Kim says, right, with respect to some of the semis. But not every company was based solely on AI, William. And uh, I know you had to lower your price target, but do you still see some upside for it on semi? What does it bring to the table in a good way? We certainly do, Nicole. So I think you hit the nail on the head that the main story of this quarter is really guidance for the fourth quarter and even for the start of 2024 that missed our expectations, definitely missed the market's expectations, and that's why you're seeing the stock down so much today. But OnSemi is bringing a lot of value to the table. So when we're talking about OnSemi, we're talking about power chips. So these aren't the ones that are going into the sexy AI applications right now but they are going into electric vehicles, renewable energy applications, and we think there's a lot to get excited about there too. So when you put this in a long-term context, we're not overly worried about a weaker short-term environment. As you said, it did cause us to cut our price target by a couple bucks to $94 a share from 97. Um, but after this 20% sell-off today, we think it's a good buying opportunity for investors, again, because of long-term growth opportunity in electric vehicles, renewable energy and emerging technologies like silicon carbide. So that was it. I mean, renewables, the electric vehicles and more, and that will help this company with margin expansion. So, so Kim, what do you think? I mean, do you think this is a buy when this name, I mean, William was just talking about this thing going to over 90 bucks. It's sitting at $66 today. Kim, is this a name that you like or do you much prefer other names in the group? Uh, I do prefer other names, and there are some warning signs, I guess, about EV adoption. I don't think it's because of the auto strikes, but it seems as if a lot of the uh, U.S. manufacturers who had been pouring in money into creating EV models and EV um, uh, you know, assembly plants, They've been pulling back because the um, the buyer just isn't there right now for EV. Now, it depends on your timeline. I'm the timeline girl. I'm three to five years all the time. But at this point, I think my expertise and my background points me to more of the compute kind of semiconductor. So we like those better than, um, you know, the the where on is playing, although I wouldn't count it out, but I think it's going to be in the penalty box for longer than we anticipate right now. Yeah, understood. Um, you know, William, you you've talked about on semi for some time. You talked about the EVs and um, energy and, and such. Are there other names that you like as well in this group? I don't want to leave them out. There are actually. So the one that comes to mind is another one I've talked about before called monolithic power systems. Now, this is going to be a place similar to on semi where these are power chips, so not necessarily the compute chips that are all the rage for AI right now. But monolithic power actually has good placement for power chips in data centers. So they're still selling alongside the likes of NVIDIA GPUs. We think it's a terrific company fundamentally. And we've seen the valuation just come back down over the past couple of months. So that's another one alongside on semi where we also see attractive value um, that we're talking to investors about right now. 
And look, this was nearly a $600 stock. MPWR monolithic power was nearly 600 bucks not that long ago. It's down at 406 now. So I, I see what you're saying when you say you like it, um, without saying it's sold off, but more so that you see the opportunity. Where do you think this stock could be headed, William? Well, so for monolithic power, our fair value estimate on it is $535 a share. So, you know, similar to what you said, it's a stock where we've seen that price go above our fair value estimate before and we haven't liked it. Yeah. But it's something we've always liked fundamentally from a company standpoint. Okay. We have a wide economic moat rating on it. And now the price just looks good. So that's why we're talking yeah. about it. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay, MPWR, once again, it's at 407 today. Uh, thank you both. Kim Forrest and William Kerwin, it is great to see you both. Really appreciate this conversation.